Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Philips GM2317. It's a sine wave oscillator. And it will be able to do from 20, 20 hertz to 250 kilohertz in those six ranges. It's tube based. We should be able to find four tubes in this one. And... Um, it's from about 1955 to 1960. And if you hear this um, frequency range switch, that is a carousel switch. So I expect to find a really big rotary part in here with capacitors and inductors and stuff. And then we got the fine tuning here. This one looks like it's working really, really good. And they even call it volume. So this is the variable output. And then we got four ranges of the output. And that's just the on-off. It uh, exists in a few different uh, models. Also, some you will find with round meters. And this one is the nice rectangular meter. It looks like it is okay. Yeah, we'll have to open this one first, I guess. And it's about 10 kilos, so this is typical for tube-based stuff. It's quite heavy, and um, I always uh, read this if I if there is uh, information about this. The 35 watts here tells me a little bit about how what to expect because when I power this up, it's really good to know where we are, right? And then this is the this is a little bit of a problem. This huge, super ugly power entry. But I think I got a connector for this one uh, on my little power entry stock. Of course, this was easy to find. So this is how it looks. This is the original one. And um, there's, of course, protective earth connections in this one. And it goes to these, uh, these two metal parts here on the side. And then you have a good, safe, protective entry. So inside the unit, we definitely find the four tubes. Um, here we go, four. So the last one here is nicely shielded. Instead of just plugging on those standard shields, they made their own at a large diameter. And I think this is uh, so they can prevent the tube from overheating. And that is a classic problem with those normal tube shields. So everything here is... Oh, this one is a little bit loose. So this is the EC80 uh, rectifier. And uh, in here, I think we find the variable capacitor. And there's a little funny thing with this capacitor here. It is connected to the frequency dial with a, uh, I think, this white nylon wire. It's just a string, right? And then the readout, as you can see here, the readout is here in the middle right there. And here is the capacitor, right? So there is actually another little pulley wheel and then a steel wire connecting these two. And the steel wires, of course, wound around this bigger wheel and then tied to each end and stuff like that. So then there's a fixed relationship between this ratio of the readout and the capacitor. So that's uh, quite neat. There's a little secret uh, signature down there. And then we have this fantastic carousel switch. Oh, let me see if I can do that without breaking it. Oh, it also says, is that the year? 51? I think it couldn't be that uh, because it was uh, made in 55 to 60, right? So I don't know. That's probably some other number. So we also got a little note here. This is probably a repair job. And um, output transformer. And uh, the mains transformer is here. And uh, we got four bulbs in this model. And that is a little bit special because uh, on the schematic you see 
two of them in series. I'll show you the schematic so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got four bulbs, probably for some extra um, level compensation instead of those two. And funny enough, they hidden them inside plastic tubes, so you can't really see them, but they don't light up or anything like that, really. So now we are inside the little capacitor room here. But look what I find. I find something that is also not explained on the schematic, at least not to a degree I understand it. We've got two resistors in series, and that end is connected to brown. Look at look what that is. This is a heater. So they're trying to heat up the capacitor or remove moisture from this room for accuracy and stability, I guess. That is interesting. I did not find that. So where the heck is that on the schematic? I don't know. And there, we are now inside the carousel switch room. And we've got the four connections to the different uh, frequency setting components. But I really cannot find any excuse for not powering this up. Everything is nice and fine and clean and no leaked components or anything like that. So yeah, I think it is definitely Time to power it up now. Oh, yeah, the look at that one is cracked. Well, that is not causing any kind of uh, safety risk, but it's, it's definitely cracked. So let's try and do the first power up. So that is uh, 50 volts, uh, 4 watts. That is pretty much all right. So I can easily carry on and I see now light. That is 120 volts and I just continue 150, 60, nothing is bad here. Then we are now at 220 volts and it's using 25 watts and it's going to 40 watts and 46 watts. And that is uh, also what I would expect. We'll see. Well, that is interesting. See, ah, so look at that. There is something that is not uh, working here, right? It goes on and on. That is all. Hmm. Can you see the ripple? And that is the problem. Oi, 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 oi. We are having power supply issues. I can also see the power supply is going up and down. Oh, 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 oh. Did you see that? And then it turns off. Yeah, there is definitely a problem <laughs> with a capacitor somewhere <laughs> that is going. When you see ripple like that, uh, that means we're using too much power. And then when you see, yeah, you saw exactly <laughs> what I wanted to see. So yeah, well, it's definitely blown up at the at the the way it is. And this this is why I always have a hand on my power input so I can prevent um, I can almost always prevent smoke so let's look at my experiments here this resistor here is 220 Celsius well, that is definitely not normal and this capacitor here is creating a voltage to the output system and let me show you the output voltage is quite stable now. 
but it's also working right now. <laughs> so that's funny. So now the voltage will drop here. So now it is in its uh, good mood, and this uh, resistor here will now cool down. But in a minute, when it goes all bad again, then this uh, voltage here. I don't know. It's typical when I want to de demonstrate something. Ah, that is annoying. But it went just all the way up and down and super crazy um, just before. So there's definitely something that is uh, going on around the probably that capacitor or the little blue capacitor here that is in series with that signal and all that kind of stuff. But Anyway, other than that, I mean, it is definitely easy to get this one up and running. All I have to do is, uh, yeah, change a few of the capacitors. And that is a normal thing to do with old stuff like this. So you will get a nice and stable performance. And uh, right now it has a good moment. It's uh, actually even accurate on the output frequency. So uh, that is pretty good. Nice little oscillator that is like, what, 60 years old <laughs> or even more. That's just a little bit fascinating. Yeah, those are really old caps as well. So I think that is, uh, I don't want to go into super much detail. I'm just going to sit here and play around with some capacitors the next few hours. So you don't need to be uh, looking at all that. See you around. Bye bye.